All right, we're on to the next weapon on our list of the final content drop in Battlefield 5. It's the M1941 Johnson, which we may call the Jono for the rest of the video. Not sure yet. Uh, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below, please. Either now or after hearing what I have to say, if you want. What do you give the Jono out of 10? And despite what you may hear said about this gun elsewhere, I can tell you hand on heart that I personally think it's the worst semi-auto in BF5. Why? Because it has no relevant purpose in using it over other other options for the vast majority of people. And I can back this up, don't worry, I will do. This is based upon both experience and statistical analysis via sim.gg. Now what this video does not mean is that this gun can't be used effectively, it does not mean it can't appear to be good, it does not mean it won't be some people's favourite gun, and it does not mean you have to agree with everything I say about it, alright? And I would wager with confidence that the Jono only does well due to it being a semi-auto rifle, and semi-autos are dominant in this game due to balancing. So so it's not about it being the Johnson, it's just that it's a semi-auto. Now we can kick things on by using the mixed responses we're seeing about this gun, essentially highlighting that the community isn't sure what it's for. It's been labelled as being great for short range due to its ease of use, or mid range for its damage model, or long range due to its velocity and stability. But actually, it's not an optimal choice for any of them, and nor is it a solid jack of all trades as it's also comfortably, brutally beaten at all ranges by some other options, because although it's a three bullet kill out to 100 meters, it's slow in comparison to what you could use. By the way, just let me slip this in here. Yesterday, you guys were epic when I mentioned subscribing as I'm pushing for 50k while this game is still even slightly relevant. So if you knew or haven't subbed yet, please do just consider it at least. It's much appreciated. So anyway, at close range, you're not even close to competing with a huge amount of weapons. It may be easy to control your recoil, but your time to kill is awful. It's likely best at medium range, but it's again not an optimal choice, as I said, because it can do damage there, it is fun to use, and it's very simplistic in terms of requirements, you know, landing three shots and down they go, but there are again guns with better times to kill that are also pretty easy to use, if not sometimes easier to use. And for long range and or super long range, it's not optimal again, because it's beaten by some options within the class for kill time, as well as being straight up outclassed by self-loading rifles, such as the ZH-29, or indeed by a bolt action rifle, especially at excessive ranges due to its one-shot headshot capability and the six-time scope on offer. Not to mention the fact that you're always reloading due to only having 10 rounds. And you have to reload with stripper clips and individual rounds, not a magazine, so you're reloading a lot with a relatively slow time to kill, at least at some ranges, and constantly having to question what you can and can't challenge, how many rounds you can afford to use on this, can you go for the next enemy, and such like. And the fast reload spec only boosts it by 15%, which also means you're then missing out on recoil buffer, although the gun is already pretty stable, and no, there's no detachable magazine specialization on offer. So while it may be the best choice for a very, very small amount of players, as it just happens to fit their playstyle, strengths, and weaknesses, for a good, say, 99% of players, you're simply better off with a different weapon. Some people will point to the stability of the weapon being a key factor, and that is nice, but the level of stability it has simply isn't worth it, with so many semi-autos being so easy to use anyway. It's not so far ahead that it's impossible possible to ignore. In fact, it does kick a little bit still, and actually some semi-autos will be easier to use from a control standpoint anyway, so it isn't ungodly forgiving whilst not being that potent. It's kind of like one of those guns in an FPS game that's easy to use but then not a top performer to balance it out, but without the usual level of ease of use. Easy but not idiot proof. So what is it for? Where are we going with this? Because the Selbs Ladder 1916 has the same damage model and has 160% more rounds available per reload standing at 26. Now yeah, the Selb has a slower rate of fire, but you can even spec that for a faster rate of fire and you'll have the same TTK as the Johnson with 26 rounds, albeit with basically a worse version of the Jono in other ways. But as I said, semi-autos are so good in this game regardless. The Selb is easily passable as the gun itself for a decent player, you then aren't reloading every few seconds and you can utilize the actual point that guns like this usually have, lots of rounds. And you can still just pace your shots for consistent three tap kills out to 100 meters anyway. That is why some top players actually use the Selb 1916, because they're good enough players that the gun being a bit clunky and killing a bit slower is still worth it for that pub stomping ability to use 26 rounds. The Jono doesn't have that, nor the raw stats in other ways to make up for it. Why? Well, let's use another comparison. There's the often ignored Carabin, a semi-auto that also kills in three bullets out to 100 meters whilst firing faster and still being very easy 
and reliable to use. Here's the timed kill chart for the two guns. Now take that in and I ask, why would almost anyone use the Johnson? Why? For what purpose? The obvious answer would be that the in-game stat bars show that the Johnson has better control. Well, I regularly tell everyone now to not put all of your trust into those basic stat bars as they don't actually communicate all that much to you beyond very basic premises. I'll put up some old footage here of the Carabin while we talk about this, and please do look at that footage and tell me. Does it seem like it's hard to control? Does it look as if I find it any harder than using the Johnson? Because I'd comfortably say it isn't. In fact, for me specifically, it's easier to use. And whether you yourself find it easier or harder, there won't be much in it, with more people likely finding it easier anyway. Because if we use sim.gg, the truth about the recoil comparison is that while the Carabin has worse initial recoil when you start shooting, the consistent basic recoil is actually better, lending credence to me saying that it might actually be easier to use, not harder. Honestly, if you just pull down consistently on the stick or on the mouse, it stays super, super stable anyway, and has a faster times kill at every single range. And I did take the times compare reload animation times for the two, and they're very similar. Yet when I've talked about the Carabin before, the major criticism has been frequency of and time spent reloading. So I kind of failed to see how that can be ignored by many on the Johnson, when it's also objectively less lethal. And while the Carabin is apparently a bit less accurate, honestly, how often do you really feel like your shots aren't landing with a semi-auto rifle in this game anyway? It really is looking harder and harder to claim that the Jono has a purpose. I'm guessing that some will reasonably suggest it's worth picking due to its strong muzzle velocity, because yep, it's good for that, with a base stat of 780, but the Carabin itself has 760, and both weapons can use high velocity rounds if you want, to reach 880 and 860 respectively. Is that difference going to be worth the trade-off of all those other weaknesses for most players? Absolutely not. And also, is it really that hard to lead the target just a little bit? I'd also say no, not really. And to use high velocity rounds anyway on the Jono, you lose using custom stock and lighten stock, further pigeonholing you into one specific playstyle and creating a cumbersome feel overall just to say you're using the gun for the strength that it's got. Let's get back to that Johnson footage now anyway. So while we're on bullet velocity, it's not a standout strength for the Johnson in the way some people think it is anyway. The MES 44 or MAS 44 for example, which kills way faster than the Jono inside 50 meters, a tiny bit slower between 50 and 100, and then significantly faster past 100 meters, has superior muzzle velocity by 40. And the same again with high velocity rounds, reaching a stat of 920, while still being pretty easy to use and is obviously still a semi-auto rifle, which are essentially statistically overpowered due to a lack of spread and horizontal recoil. So if we open this up a bit, if you want a fast two-shot headshot, AGM-42. Do you want to just spam M1A1? Want loads of ammo? Selbs ladder. Want a weapon that just kills faster everywhere and is still easy to use? Carabin. Let's ram it home. The Johnson has no purpose for almost all players unless you're one of the very few it just happens to fit for whatever reason. It isn't the best option for anything, nor is it good enough for everything to be the versatile choice. Like genuinely, the long range angle is what people are pushing a lot with this gun right now, but you're just better off with something else. Self-loading rifles like the ZH-29 can two tap to the body and absolutely destroy the Johnson for time to kill at long ranges. And then with visibility as it is in this game, I'd argue that for the vast, vast majority of players, a semi-auto rifle with a max scope magnification value of three times and just 10 rounds is better off being good at closest to longish medium range, not long range to extreme long range. Besides, it is actually better at medium range anyway for TTK, just not good enough when compared with some other options. And if you're gonna stay at long range, why use assault anyway 99% of the time? Although it has been brought up to me that a long range semi-auto might pair well with a big map if you're going tank hunting or something, and maybe so, but again, Carabin. What about another comparison point for you though? Another new gun, the M3 Infrared of the Recon class, which some people see as a bit of a joke, but I actually really like it, kills faster than this gun out to 50 meters. And that brings me to a key point. In this game, how many of you think you're having more relevant fights before or after 50 meters? Well, if you're anything like an objective player at all, and you actually move around a bit and try to be part of your squad, inside 50 meters is infinitely more common and more valuable a lot of the time. So that bit of extra muscle velocity isn't being utilized all that much where the gun is actually 
really relevant anyway. It can be fun though, it is satisfying to use at times and it does sound good, but the trade-off simply isn't worth it. It's a good Selbstladder 1916 but without the entire point in using the weapon, or a bad carabin which kills more slowly and has strengths in areas it didn't need them. And so, that is my coverage of the Jono. Let me know what you think of the gun and thanks so much for watching. If you liked, please do leave a like. If you didn't, maybe a dislike. Consider subscribing for loads more content coming and all the links to my social media including Patreon can be found in the description and my pinned comment where if you do support me you'll get onto the board of awesome you're seeing right here with all the other absolute heroes that already do so. I love them all of course deeply and often. So yep link to that in the description and my pinned comment and with all that said I'm Get Good Guy and I'll see you next time laters. But it is pretty fascinating for me either way that the EMPC's little usage, while it's almost clone, arguably worse version, the well gun, is the new in thing to use.